All right, Shalom. This is Har One by Yasha Allah of the Gem is Lions and Camp. I want to say Kal Halayim, La Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Harakar Kodash, Mama. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS. And Shalom to you, Akim, and Agwathim and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. This is Jeremiah 25 and 1. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim. Right, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. All right, now the scripture gives timelines, um, uh, which are important. Now, uh, Jeremiah 25 and 1 speaks about Jeremiah, uh, which was actually delivered during the time of Babylon. All right, and uh, he was an Israelite. I think he's from the tribe of Benjamin, if I'm not mistaken. All right, this is Jeremiah 38 and 6. And this is uh, the moment that uh, Jeremiah was delivered from uh, Babylon. Now it says, uh, you know, after, after uh, Babylon was taken in 586 BC, uh, a few years later, you had uh, Jeremiah was delivered from uh, being in, in the dungeon, uh, being put in the dungeon by his own people. This is Jeremiah 38 and 6. Uh, then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the son of uh, Hemelech, that was in the court of the prison. And they let down Jeremiah with cords, and in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. So you can imagine being put into a, a, a well with nothing but mud, man. You know, you're looking up out of the well. There's no water or anything down there. No food, you know. And uh, that's the type of times we're coming to. To where everybody, uh, in, um, everybody in this coming judgment is going to be left with nothing. And you're going to have the faith that how Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to deliver you uh, from any trap that they have set. All right. Well, uh, now it says, uh, then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the son of Hemelech, that was in the court of the prison. And they let down Jeremiah with cords. And in the dungeon, there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. He was sinking, sinking in the mud. That's <laughs> deep, man. Now when uh, Abedmelech, the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs, which was in the king's house, heard that they put Jeremiah in the dungeon. The king then sitting in the gate of Jer Benjamin. All right, so, uh, Jeremiah was a Benjamite. Uh, Abedmelech went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, My lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophets. the whom they have cast into the dungeon, and he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. All right, so in, uh, in these times we ended, the Lord will take away the bread from the city of America in whatever city you're in when there's a famine. All right, or to cast uh, some of us into prison for teaching his word. And uh, that might be the way you uh, be set up for deliverance, though. Verse 10, it says, Then the king commanded Abedmelech, the Ethiopian, saying, Take from hence 30 men with thee, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he die. See that? So he, he was being tested, man. And the Lord told him he was going to be delivered. All right. And the ones that uh, tried to flee, from the destruction of people like uh, Zedekiah, the king, that was selling out and, and uh, turning against uh, the warning that Jeremiah, the prophet, was given. And also, I think he used uh, Baruch to send letters to Jehoiakim, and they ripped up the letters. 
you know, they were just being wicked, man. They didn't believe that the Lord was going to send the judgment upon them uh, through uh, Nebuchadnezzar until he was actually looking them in the face, looking them in the eyes. And that's what's about to happen in America, in this world. All right, the judgment is coming upon Babylon, uh, modern-day Babylon. You know, two-thirds of our people. But the Lord said, if you're in the spirit of Jeremiah, All right, this is the word uh, Jeremiah in the Hebrew, uh, Yeremiah or Jeremiah, and it says, whom Yahweh has appointed. So if you're in that spirit of whom Yahweh has appointed to be his prophet or his uh, warning to the people, Yahweh will, uh, will rise because his name is not Yah, all right? That's an abbreviation. Yahweh will rise. So the Lord going to raise that person up. All right. It says, uh, Yahweh has appointed whom Yahweh has appointed. So the one he set up to be a prophet or whom he has chosen, he's going to lift up a standard for you in that day and protect you. All right. So um, we, hopefully we're in that same spirit of whom he has appointed before we, before he even formed us in the womb, being the spirit of the prophets, subject unto the prophets. All right. Uh, you know, Jeremiah 1 and 5, I think it is, uh, where it says, uh, let me get it. Jeremiah, or Jeremiah 1 and 5, uh, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So before the Lord formed you in the belly, he knew you. If, if you're set up to do this work in this time that we're in, the time of salvation and deliverance. All right, in the morning of the people. You know, there's a, there's a flood coming, there's a danger coming, a judgment. And that's what uh, the, the hopeful elect, the prophets, are set up to do, warn the people. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So before you were created in the belly, your body, the Lord knew your spirit. All right? And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained, I ordained thee as a prophet unto the nations. You know, so if you're in that spirit, then the Lord has ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations as well and set up for the um, deliverance. All right. And uh, I'm going to get back to that verse, chapter in uh, Jeremiah 38. And uh, just to get the, the more clarity on who put um, Jeremiah into the uh, that well, man, into a pit, you know, of mud. And about to leave them there to die. Even as an invasion was coming, they would do that to their own people. You know, they were they were, they were actually wicked. And he was a wicked king of Israel, of Judah at that time, Zedekiah. He was selling out, and he was put in place by um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian Assyrian uh, king at that time. You know, and uh, I think it was five ninety seven. BC. Now, um, all right, so it says uh, Jeremiah 38 and 2. Thus saith Yahweh, he that remaineth in this city shall die by the sword. So the Lord, actually, I'm going to read from the top. Then uh, Shepat, Shepatiah, the son of Matan, and Gedaliah, the son of Peshur, the, and Jukal, the son of Shelemiah and Peshur, the son of Malchiah, heard the words that Jeremiah had spoken unto all the people, saying, See, Jeremiah was warning the people. Right? Just like we warn the people today. Those that, that stay in this world mentally, in the state of confusion, Babylon, in the state of America, right? that are falling after the ways of America, you're going to be destroyed. You know, being a, if, if, if you're appointed to teach the people and warn the people of that, then you're set up in the spirit of deliverance, of, of hope. All right? Being free from Babylon and protected from the judgment. Now, um, it would be called the time of Jacob's trouble that's coming upon our people. Verse 2, Thus saith Yahweh, he that remaineth in the city, 
shall die by the sword and uh by the famine and by the pestilence all right but he that goeth forth to the chaldeans shall live for he shall have life he shall have his life for a prey and shall live so the lord was telling them instead of running from it the storm going to it and that's what we do on the day instead of running in fear, the Lord gave us a spirit of hope to where we uh, present, present our bodies as a living sacrifice. All right. Verse 3, it says, Thus saith Yahweh, this city shall surely be given into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. See that? All right. And that says, uh, Therefore the princes saith unto the king, We beseech thee, let this man be put to death. <laughs> See that man? So they started selling out to Zedekiah and and he fell for it. Yeah, he was he was bewitched and fell for it. And said, Hey, let's, let's let's go ahead and put him put him away, man. Ain't no you know Babylon is showing up to me and do nothing to me. See that his uh, Zedekiah was selling out, being wicked. Now it says, therefore the princess saith unto the king, We beseech thee, let this man be put to death. For thus he, he weakeneth the hands of the men of war that remain in this city. But the truth is supposed to strengthen you. He said it was deliverance. If you go and give in, the Lord is saying he was bringing that judgment. And he was going to use the Chaldeans, which were the Assyrians. Um, they weren't the direct bloodline of Ashurbanipal. Which was the um, descendant of S.R. Haddon um, through uh, Senate Carib. But um, they were descendants of um, Asher, you know, uh, through, through a different family. But they were still Assyrians, all right, that took on the Chaldean uh, uh, customs. And all it was was the worshiping of different deities. They were dealing with the worship of uh, sin, and they were dealing with the worship of Mar Marduk in Babylon. Right, the Syrians were worshiping uh, sin, and Nabu they were worshiping uh, um, uh, Marduk, which is the moon. Shit. So they were worshiping planets, and they called that time the time of the uh, the birth of the idols. All right, that's when all the idols were being put out, and imagination of these nations were being displayed in the witchcrafts and the Lord was uh, showing that he was the true and living power Yahweh you know and son Yahweh Shai and the powers of heaven now it says uh, in speaking such words unto them for this man seeketh not the welfare of this people but the hurt and that's what they say unto us today when we say hey the Lord gonna destroy you if you don't repent they say no nah, you trying to hurt us man you see that they, they use your words against you but really you set up to warn the people and hoping to, to free them and have them be exempt from the judgment to come you know then Zedekiah the king said behold he is in your hand see Zedekiah sold out for the king is not he that can do anything against you then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the son of uh, Hamalek, that was in the court of the prison. Deep, man. They put him inside the prison. Under the prison. <laughs> and they let down Jeremiah with cords, and in the dungeon, there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the, in the mire, in the mud. By feces, all kind of shit. Man. Now, when Abimelech, the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs, which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king, then sitting in the gate of Benjamin, Abimelech, Abedmelech, went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, My lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet. 
whom they have cast into the dungeon, and he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. Then the king commanded Abedmelech the Ethiopian, saying, Take from hence thirty men with thee, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he die. So Abedmelech took the men with him <clears throat> and went into the house of the king under the treasury and took thence old cast clouts and old rotten rags and let down by cords into the dungeon to Jeremiah. And Abedmelech the Ethiopian said unto Jeremiah, Put now these old cast clouts and rotten rags under thy armholes under the cords and Jeremiah did so. So they drew up Jeremiah with cords and took him out of the dungeon, and Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Then Zedekiah the king sent and took Jeremiah the prophet unto him into the third entry that is in the house of Yahweh, at, at the, behind the third wall. And the king said unto Jeremiah, I will ask thee a thing, hide nothing from me. <clears throat> then Jeremiah said unto Zedekiah, If I declare it unto thee, wilt thou not surely put me to death? And if I give thee counsel, wilt thou not hearken unto me? See, so you're saying, cast not thy prayer before swine. See, Jeremiah was being wise. All right. So Zedekiah the king swear secretly unto Jeremiah, saying, As Yahweh lived, that made us this soul, I will not put thee to death, neither will I give thee into the hand of these men that seek thy life. Then said Jeremiah to Zedekiah, Thus saith Yahweh, the power, Yahweh, uh, the, the power of the army of heaven, of the, of the power of Israel. If thou wilt surely go forth unto the king of Babylon's princes, then thy soul shall live, and this city shall not be burned with fire, and thou shalt live in thy house. See, Zedekiah wasn't listening. And scriptures say, pride cometh before a fall. All right. Now it says, uh, but if thou wilt not go forth to the king of, of Babylon, princes, then shall this city be given into the hand of the Chaldeans. And then shall and they shall burn it with fire. So the Lord was saying since Zedekiah was being wicked anyway. So he might as well um uh you know you know have him uh turn over the kingdom to the to the uh heathens. And he didn't want to give it up. So the Lord was like, Alright, I'm gonna have him come take it from me. See that? Now it says, uh, But if thou wilt not go forth to the king of Babylon's princes, then shall the city be given into the hand of the Chaldeans. They shall burn it with fire, and thou shalt not escape out of their hands. <clears throat> and Zedekiah the king said unto Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews that have fallen to the Chaldeans. Thus they deliver me into their hand, and they mock me. But Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver thee, O obey, I beseech thee, the voice of Yahweh. And the voice of the of the voice of Yahweh today are the prophets of Israel, right, that teach the truth. Which I speak unto thee, so it shall be well unto thee, and thy soul shall live. But if thou refuse to go forth, this is the word that Yahweh have showed me. And behold, all the women that are left in the king of Judah's house shall be brought forth to the king of Babylon's princes. And those women <clears throat> shall say, Thy friends have set thee on and have prevailed against thee. Thy feet are sunk in the mire and they are turned away back. <laughs> So the Lord is going to sink him in the mire now, into the mud. You can see that? So while the Lord had him in that pit or in that affliction and adversity, the Lord gave Jeremiah a message to give to the king.
and told him that he was going to bring him low. All right. So they shall bring out all thy wives and thy children to the Chaldeans, and thou shalt not escape out of their hand, but shall be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon, and thou shalt cause this city to be burned. You know, so the Lord protected Jeremiah. Uh, you know, here, I'm going to read it down. It says, verse 27. Then came all the princes unto Jeremiah and asked him, and he told them according to all these words that the king had commanded. So they left off speaking with him, uh, for the for the matter was not perceived. So Jeremiah abode in the court of the prison until the day that Jerusalem was taken. And he was there uh, when Jerusalem was taken. See that? So he was warning the people, but he was still there in the affliction. Just like today, they say, oh, you're you going to be here with us. Well, we if we had a chance to leave, we would, you know, and, and be with Yahweh by Shem Shah. But we know that this earth is given into the hand of the wicked. They're all over the earth. And it's a judgment coming upon the whole world. So uh, blessed are they that are in the affliction, that they shall be delivered out of it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue with this topic. Um, this is not my lesson, but I'm going to go with the Spirit. Um, Jeremiah 39 and 1. In the ninth year of Zedekiah, uh, king of Judah, uh, in the tenth month, which is late, in, it was late in, in the year, um, in the ninth year of Zedekiah, which uh, Zedekiah started ruling um, in 597 B.C., all right, so if you get 597 BC and you subtract, uh, uh, what was it? Um, all right, if you subtract um, nine, that would give you 588 BC. And in 588 BC, that's when they started the siege upon uh, uh, Jerusalem. And they laid a four year siege, all right. Uh, Really, from uh, 598, you know, until 586 uh, BC. So that's what they mean in the scriptures, where it says, uh, "In the ninth year," which would be um, 588 BC. All right, in the ninth year of King Zedekiah. Now it says, "In the ninth year of Zedekiah, King of Judah." All right. So that would be 588. DC, right, in the 10th month, so it was late in the year, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army against Jerusalem, and they besieged it. So that was, uh, you know, all those armies of the Assyrians, you know, um, and the Syrians as well, you know, um, so. And they all came against uh, Jerusalem and besieged it. Now it says, and in the 11th year of Zedekiah, so two years later, all right, two years later, from 588 BC, so in the 11th year, which will be what? So track two is just 586, all right? So this happened in 586 BC. Now it says, and in the 11th year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, so that was around the, uh, the springtime, the Passover, the city was broken up, and all the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle of the gate. So Nebuchadnezzar, uh, king, um, and his governors, they were sitting there looking Zedekiah in the face. Prophecy manifested that happened. And Jeremiah was about to be delivered from that. It says, in the 11th year of Zedekiah, in the fourth, oh, so like, uh, and all the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate, even uh, Nagal Shereza, which was, I think that was the son of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Neriglasar, 
and uh, it was, the kingdom was stolen from him, if I'm not mistaken, by um, Amal Marduk. And then it was taken from him by Nebuchadnezzar. And that's when you had uh, Belshazzar, his son. All right, but Nebuchadnezzar was still king when Babylon fell. All right, and that's what the book of Daniel speaks of. The first half speaks of uh, the encounters with Nebuchadnezzar. And all. Uh, then it breaks in half from chapter 4 and goes into the experiences with Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar. And all of them were experiences that they had with our creator, Yahweh, Bashem Yahushua, when he showed himself to them and put fear upon these nations, man, and delivered uh, the believers. Now it says, uh, Sam Garnabo, Sar Sakim, Rab Saris, Neriglisar, all right, I think that's what they're talking about. Rab Mag, with all the residue of the princes of the king of Babylon. And it came to pass that when Zedekiah, the king of Judah, saw them and all the men of war, then they fled and went forth out of the city by night. Oh, then they wanted to leave. By the way of the king's garden, by the gate betwixt the two walls, and he went out of the way of the palm, the plain. But the Chaldeans' army pursued after them and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And when they had taken him, they brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to Ribla in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. And that was the Lord going to have these nations due to two-thirds of our people that's in that spirit of Zedekiah. The same ones that persecuted Yahweh by Shemel Shah 2,000 years ago are back here today. He said, let the sins fall upon their children. And if you're against the truth, you're in that spirit of resisting the voice of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. Now it says, uh, verse 6, Then the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah and Ribla before his eyes. Also the king of Babylon slew all the nobles of Judah. Wow. Moreover, he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him with chains to carry him to Babylon. And the Chaldeans burned the king's house and the houses of the people with fire and break down the walls of Jerusalem. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive into Babylon the remnant of the people that remained in the city and those that fell away. See, Daniel was already in Babylon by this time, right? He was taken during the time of Jehoiakim. Right, um, around 598. Now it says, uh, and those that fell away uh, actually, uh, Daniel was there before that. He was taken there around 606 uh, BC, um, uh, right around the war of battles of Carchemish, 605 BC, when uh, Jehoiakim sold him out and, and sold him over to uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar after he was put in power, put in power by Nebuchadnezzar, and he sold our people in, into captivity. And later on in 598, that's when Jehoiakim that wicked king of Israel, of Judah, he was uh, taken into chains and taken into Babylon. You know, and that's when you get Zedekiah. Or uh, I think you had uh, Jehoiakim for about three months and then you had Zedekiah. So it says, uh, Then Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, carried away captive into Babylon the remnant of the people that remained in the city. And those that fell away, that fell to him with the rest of the people that remained. But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left of the poor of the people, which had nothing in the land of Judah, and gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. So, see that? They were giving some form of protection. And that was the Lord putting the spirit on uh Nebuchadnezzar and 
Nebuchadnezzar, those heathens, the Lord controls uh, both sides, man. Now it says 11. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave charge concerning Jeremiah to Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, saying, Take him and look well to him and do him no harm. But do unto him even as he shall say unto thee. Sheesh. So do whatever he says. You know, and, and in these times, the Lord said the same thing. <laughs> All right, this is um Psalms 105 and 5. It says, Remember his marvelous works that he hath done. And that's what this is about. That's why I'm reading these scriptures in remembrance of the marvelous works that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh has done. To remind our people, right? Uh, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. And neither just because of the seed of, ja of Abraham are you the, in the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. You know, to be called Yasha Allah, a son of. A royalty of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, son or daughter. He is Yahweh, our power. His judgments are, are in all the earth, man. You know, so even Esau ruling right now, the Most High set that up so he can show his long suffering, his patience, his power in destroying them and bringing judgment upon the children of Israel and taking it away. You see that? He has remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, to Israel for an everlasting covenant. You know, that's twofold, because now we're under the covenant of faith and, uh, and the law of faith, which all of those are supposed to lead you to keeping the law to the best of your ability anyway. All right. So it says, verse 11, saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance? And that's, a, we're still going to get that land someday. When they were but a few in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he he reproved kings for their sakes. See, and we, uh, we read about it. We just read about one of those occurrences in the book of Jeremiah. All right. To where um, he protected Jeremiah. You know, and I'm going to go into one where he protected Daniel and other prophets as well. Uh, as he's promising to protect uh, the hopeful elect from the coming judgment or his chosen, the one that he chooses to protect. It says, he suffered no man to do them wrong. No weapon formed against them prospered. He reproved kings for their sakes, man. Kings. Saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You know, this is a Sirach 2 and 1. My son, if thou come to serve Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, prepare thy soul for temptation. All right, this is that word temptation in the Greek. Um, sheesh, parasmos, para, parasmos, all right, which is a uh, Greek, it means. A putting to proof by experiment, by experiment of good experience of evil. So we're gonna experience some evil times coming up. All right, just like Jeremiah went through by being cast into that prison, the whole experience of that, and how they probably treated him before that, and threatened him with death, and he had to trust you how trust you how about Shemuel Shai, even when he's looking at the face of them Babylonians, them Syrians. 
right? Nebuchadnezzar's uh, uh, Ethiopians and them. Um, you know, that was one of his guards. But I'm talking about uh, Nebuchadnezzar being a Syrian. Now it says, uh, a, a putting to proof by experiment of good, experience of evil, solicitation, discipline, provocation, by implication, adversity. All right. It says putting to proof, right? That says an, an experiment, an experiment, attempt, trial, proving, trial. You know, so uh, that's just it, trial, man. I don't know what the hell that was. It's like a jet, something went over just now. Never heard that before. I heard jets, but I ain't never heard it sound like that before. Uh, anyway, so an internal temptation to sin. And that's also talking about the RFID chip. So you're going to be tested, man. The kingdom is a beautiful thing that's being set before us. You know. My son, if thou come to serve your Bashim El Shai, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly adore. I mean, be patient and long suffering, right? You know, remain solid and keep your integrity in this truth. And make no, not haste in time of trouble. All right. Uh, but seek to flee from these times, but don't move in fear. All right. It says, cleave unto him. So cleave unto the, the truth. Cleave unto your heart by was shy. With all your substance, all your mind, all your thoughts, all your actions, all your speakings, your prayer. And depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Man. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low state. Just like Jeremiah was changed, brought low. Or when they started to afflict him. You know. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. You know, so that's when it's going to be showtime. It's time to show and prove who the Lord's men truly are once the adversity finally hits. All right, right now, we're speaking of that adversity. Or we go through uh, sighing and crying for all the abomination done in the midst thereof. You know, and being in the society, being an Israelite is affliction. But when the adversity comes, man, it's going to be heavy. Time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, it's going to be a time that we're going to be ha crying, to, to hastening to flee from. For gold is tried in the fire. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Ye that fear Yahweh, wait for his mercy and go not aside lest ye fall. So don't start uh, falling out of the truth, man. Going back into the world. <clears throat> Ye that fear Yahweh, believe him and your, your reward will not fail. The kingdom is not going to fail. Ye that fear Yahweh, by Shem Shai, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see. And that's what we just did. We looked at in the Old Testament, Jeremiah. And we we saw through the, uh, the vision, through the scriptures. All right. Did ever any trust in Yahweh Bashim was shy and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? All right. For Yahweh is full of compassion and mercy and long suffering and very pitiful and forgiveth sins and saveth in the time of affliction. But woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and sinners that go two ways. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not, there shall he not be defended. Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will you do? 
when your Yahweh Hashem Yahushai shall visit you, man. So the ones that have walked away, you know, um, you know, so you know, the ones that walked away from this truth, stop teaching, and stop believing, or they walk away from uh, uh, teaching, and they want you to join them and follow them and go back into the world. The Lord not going to defend them, man. Like he promised to defend the ones that's appointed, the ones that's in the spirit of uh, Jeremiah. All right, this is Second Ezra 7 and 3. And I said, speak on my power. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place that it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it if he went not through the narrow? How could how could he come into the broad? So how could you get your reward, which is the kingdom, the sea, the heavens, you know, the kingdom? You know, and uh, if you don't go through the narrow, the, the, the affliction, the same afflictions as our king did, Yahweh Shai, man. How could you be deserving of being crowned by him? All right. There is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. The interest thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. All right, which is Babylon. You can fall spiritually. And you can die here. We sent that sheep among wolves. All right. Um, like as if they were a fire on the right hand and on the left hand, a deep water. And one only path between them both. Even between the fire and the water. So small that there could but one man go there at once. You know, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, which is which is the inheritance of the children of Israel, but it's only given to the elect, all right, the chosen, the ones that are appointed. All right, Jeremiah. If he never shall pass the danger set before him, he to overcome, man. How shall he receive this inheritance? You know, and we, we, we can't overcome this world. Um, you know, if if we don't have your help by Shemel Shah. You know, it says, and I said, it is so, Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Then he said unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. You know. It says, I'm going to keep going, verse 11. Because for their sakes I made the world. So the Lord did make the world for the children of Israel's sake. All right. Uh, out, out of all the seeds of, that came out of um, the times of Adam, or from Adam, you know, from Ham, Japheth, and Shem, and all the nations, uh, you know, uh, the Lord, uh, you know, he, he made the world for the children of Israel's sake. All right. And it says, and when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was the creed that now is done. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. Right? Um, and that over time, um, the Lord took that uh, eternal life away from us. To where we was in the flesh, and in this flesh, we, uh, you know, you lived to about a hundred years old. The Lord started decreasing a lifespan upon Earth. You know, that's when it created that process of reincarnation. Go back to the heavens, come back to the earth. Go back to the heavens, come back to the earth. All the way up to the time now, to judgment, to the second Adam, Yahweh shot from heaven. You know. Waiting for us in, in the wide and the sea. Right. It says, uh, 
Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil. There's a bad times we're coming into, full of perils, because a lot of wickedness upon the earth, so there's a lot of perils upon the earth. And very painful. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure, and brought immortal fruit. If then they that live labor not to enter into these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them, which is the kingdom. All right. All right. Now I'm going to get back to the scripture and finish this off. So this is Jeremiah 25 and 1. Uh, the word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim. All right, that, that was, uh, so he started ruling in, um, what was that, 609? So the fourth year would be around uh, uh, 606 or 605 BC. All right, because he really started ruling in 608, you know, if you really want to be exact. With, with Jehoiakim, he took the, he took the seat in six oh nine, but um, he really started ruling in uh, six oh eight. So four years later would be six oh uh, uh, six oh nine. So yeah, six oh five BC. Yeah, so like, all right. So um, anyway, I should have got the count uh, calculator. So uh, so yeah, so around six oh five BC, that's when Nebuchadnezzar uh took his rulership in Babylon and uh it took a lot of the children of Israel captive around 606 BC and he had the war up battle of Carchemish where they was fighting against the Egyptians and all that. So um and Zedekiah thought that uh Nebuchadnezzar lost the battle against the Egyptian the Pharaoh. Um I think his name was Nico if I'm not mistaken, it's been a while since I read it. But uh yeah, he he uh he thought that Nebuchadnezzar lost the battle, so he started selling out and making deals with Egypt. But he was a puppet ruler that was set up by Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. So that's when he came and removed him. <laughs> Took him in the chains. Alright. So it says uh so this was around six oh five BC. The son of Josiah, king of Judah, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. All right. So that was the first year, which was 605 BC. Uh, the which Jeremiah, the prophet, spake unto all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. You know, so this was after um, Israel, the northern tribes already were exiled and fell. 722 BC from the hint from the Assyrians alright now they were falling to uh, Nebuchadnezzar which was the you know the, the southern tribe Jerusalem and Benjamin fell to Nebuchadnezzar it says from the 13th year of Josiah the son of uh, Ammon King of Judah, all right, that wasn't an Ammonite, he was actually a king named Ammon, all right, uh, even unto this day, that is the thir the three and thirtieth year, all right, so I'm going to get this, um, where it says verse three, the thirteenth year of Josiah, now, you had Josiah that ruled, started ruling in 641, uh, BC, all right, and he ruled all the way till 609 BC when he died by the hands of the Pharaoh Nico of um, of Egypt. Um, you know, 609 BC, and that's when you get uh, Jehoiakaz, which was his son that came into power for about three months, but then he was removed by Nebuchadnezzar, and then Nebuchadnezzar set up Jehoiakim, all right, the wicked uh, ruler of of Judah but at 641 you had jo jo uh, Josiah um, he was a righteous the last righteous ruler which threw the last Passover all right now 641 BC now 13 years later oops, 
13 years later, take away 13, will be 628. All right. So that's important. So 628. Now it says, verse 3, from the 13th year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. So from 628 B.C., even unto this day, that is the three and twentieth year. All right, so that lets you know when Daniel started prophesying or getting the visions, um, all the way from that time. All right, um, so what? So the three, um, the three and twentieth year would be what? All right, so. Um, so 628, all right, from then all the way until, he said 3 and 20, which would be 23 years, and that'll take you to 605 BC, all right, and that's when Nebuchadnezzar started ruling, so all the way from that time, uh, 628, that lets you know when Daniel started teaching, all right, really getting the visions. All right, in the history, they tell you that he started ruling, teaching in uh, 620 BC, all right, around the same time as Ezekiel. But uh, yeah, so around 628 BC, all the way until 605, until Nebuchadnezzar, he, he started getting these visions. Uh, yeah, Jeremiah, yep. Um, Now, uh, Daniel started teaching around 605 uh, B.C. And Jeremiah uh, got these visions around uh, 628. All right. So, like, if I, if I made a mistake, I said Daniel earlier. But, yeah, Daniel started teaching around 620 B.C. And Jeremiah was teaching around 628. And that's what the scripture is saying right here. All right. Uh, getting the visions. Getting the visions and... Uh, You know, um, born in the people. All right. Now it says, uh, from the 13th year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of J Judah, even unto this day, that is the three and 20th year. And that would be around, uh, uh what was that? Yeah, 605 BC. All right. And it says, even unto this day, that is the three and twentieth year, right, six o five B.C., the word of Yahweh have come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened, man. And this is Jeremiah speaking. And they so intertwined the spirit, man, with Daniel and uh, Ezekiel, you know, so it may slip up and say Daniel sometimes because they, they moved in the same spirit, man. You know, so um, where was that? Verse four, and Yahweh set, have sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened nor inclined your ear to hear. And that's happening today as well. You know, mortal average men being sent to teach this word and the people not listening. You know, children of Israel not hearkening. Instead, they did more wickedness in the sight of Yahweh to where he got, he got madder and madder. You know, and they were sacrificing pork, swine, and uh, the women were wearing moon necklaces, selling out to the Assyrian customs and Babylonian customs, and men becoming homosexuals and selling out to idols and, and breaking the law against their brethren. You know, just selling out, man. And the same spirit is on two thirds of our people today that don't believe. The scriptures say in Romans three and three, "What if some do not believe?" You know. Now it says, uh, "And now today the Lord is sending His prophets out that prophesied against many nations and kingdoms of mournings and woes, and they sent out today as well." And that same spirit of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, right, being appointed. To rise, rise early, right? 
it says in sending them, but ye have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. Then uh, they said, Turn ye again now every one from his evil way, and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land of Yahweh, that Yahweh have given unto you and to your fathers uh, forever and ever. And go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them, and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. And now we're in the same time of judgment, another time of judgment to where the Lord is separating the sheep from the goats to the one that's going to listen and the one that's not going to listen. The one that's going to listen to the warning, his voice, as his voice is going out, they set up to warn the people. The ones that listen are his sheep, his, his sheep hear his voice, and they're going to be gathered into the barn, into the pasture. They may go through affliction. We may see affliction, experience affliction. And some of some may just see affliction with your eyes, but it's not going to come near you. And the ones that go through it, the Lord is able to to deliver you from it, even from death. You know, like He did with Lazarus, and you, you know Yahweh Shah Himself. All right, He's the proof. Now it says, uh, "And go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them." And these churches. The Muslims, all these damn religions today, man, they serving our people are serving other gods or idols, even serving man now, you know, in the spirit of worshiping man. They worshiping Obama, worshiping Trump, and shit like that. Right. Calling people uh, God on earth, uh, calling themselves the Christ and shit like that, man. All right. The Lord's name is Jehoshaphat. The anointed one, Mashiach. This is, uh, yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith Yahweh, that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. So it's, it's going to be to your own hurt, man, for you not listening and hearkening to the, the men of the Lord, to the words that are being read from the book. And the Lord said, publish the words and have them to be called cause them to be written in a book. He says, he says, blessed is he that readeth and he that hear the words of these prophecies because the time is at hand, the time of Jacob's trouble. So when you're hearing these words in the time of warning and the sound of alarm, that's the time that the Lord is saying, hey, the, the, fuck, fuck what you're doing. This is the time. This is the time of war is coming. So prepare yourself. Gird up your loins. Put on the full armor. You know, get yourself prepared spiritually so you won't be broken or fall and get weak yet ye have not hearkened unto me saith Yahweh that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt therefore thus saith Yahweh of hosts of the armies because ye have not hearkened ye have not heard my words behold I will send and take all the families of the north saith Yahweh and Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land. And, and the Lord did that. You know, uh, 586 BC, it was an onslaught all the way from the time of Jehoiakim. Uh, the Lord had them come, had uh, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar coming against the, the land of Jerusalem. All right. And, he, uh, and with, with Nebuchadnezzar, all those uh, Arab nations, the Syrian nations, uh, Media, Lydia, you know, Syria, Samaria. It says, uh, and uh, even Ethiopia and all the motherlands too, you know, some heathens that were under uh, this Assyrian name, Nebuchadnezzar. It says, Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith Yahweh, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. So when you hear about Russia, when you hear about China, you hear about Esau, they're all servants of Yahweh, the Lord controls 
the outcome of everything that happens upon this earth. He ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And we pray for deliverance from the Lord. Uh, deliver us from the wicked, which is thy sword, man. It's set up as a scourge against the righteous for, for judgment. You know, perfection of the righteous and judgment upon the wicked of our people. All right. Um, it says, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and hissing and perpetual desolation. And we've been that ever since Babylon and we've never been right ever since and even beyond that since uh, 70 AD. We haven't been right, man. And, and today we have a chance of reestablishing Jerusalem and the spirit, which is even better than having our place, you know, spiritual connection, spiritual righteousness, the spiritual communing is, is way better than a place, you know, that's, that's a perfect connection and experience, a personal experience with you and your how about Shemel Shah until we get to the kingdom, which is way even, you know, more better than this life. It says, uh, so the Lord controls what's coming, man. And you got to remember that. And he can protect you from it and deliver you from the midst of it. Moreover, I will take from thence the voice of mirth uh, and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the pride, of the bride, the sound of the millstone and the light of the candle. So when you hear it, and that happened to us in Jerusalem, you know, the celebrations, the joy, the, the families, all that shit gone. You know, it's a, it's a burial ground now. And the same thing will happen to America. And you, you people don't fear out there, man. You don't fear Yahweh by Shemel Shah. It's written about it in this, Yahweh was written in this, in the steels of these heathen nations, the, the chronicles and scrolls of their experiences with the prophets of Yahweh Bashem El Shai and the power that they prophesied about the God that they served, the hopeful elect was serving at that time. And, you know, still serve today. All right. uh, so it says, uh, now verse 11, and, and this whole land shall be a desolation and in astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years, man. And 70 years from uh, uh, 609 BC is uh, right, during the time of Je uh, Jehoiakim, when they first started coming against the land of Israel, or Jerusalem, by Nebuchadnezzar, with Jehoiakim, uh, 609 BC, when he was put into power. And uh, it's a 70 years. That'd be around 539 BC. So that was all up to the time of Cyrus. And 538 was when Cyrus made the decree for the children of Israel to come back to Jerusalem. And, re and 536 was when, they, when he put out the decree for us to rebuild. And it was, uh, um, you know, reestablished again by uh, Darius the first and uh 516 BC. Alright. So uh um, yeah, so this is what 609, 70 years later would be 539, and that's when Babylon fell in October of 539. It says, and it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon, man. So 70 years in this case. Not according to Daniel uh, 9 and 24. That's another, pro that's a metaphor, a prophecy. This right here is literally talking about the 70 years. It says, and it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished, so 539 BC, that I will punish the king of Babylon. The Lord punished his descendants, because that wasn't Nebuchadnezzar. That was, because uh, uh, after Nebuchadnezzar, you had, you had Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, his, his son, you had Nereglasar, and then you had Amel Marduk, and then you had Nebuchadnezzar, 
All right, he started ruling, and he fell in um, uh, what you call a uh, 539 BC. All right, the last king of Babylon, and he was called the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. You know, he was actually a, a direct descendant of Nebuchadnezzar, and re and it was reestablishing uh, the temple in um all of the old uh wicked idol worship <clears throat> of Nebuchadnezzar over there in Babylon over there uh, you know uh, what they call Duran where they would put the statue and the temple the, the idol the the what do you call it? the altar of Baal all right and they reestablished that you know and that's what Nebuchadnezzar was doing so anyway I'm gonna probably get into that later too so uh, that's why he was called. Uh, so when it said punish the king of Babylon, so anytime I say king of Babylon, it's usually it's really just saying Babylonians. So when it said king of Esau or Edom, it's talking about the Edomites. All right. Now it says, uh, it said that nation said Yahweh for their iniquities in the land of the Chaldeans, and will make it perpetual perpetual desolations. And I will bring upon that land all my words which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book which Jeremiah had prophesied against all the nations. That's good. And um, and also in uh, the lamentation that Jeremiah was prophesying against Esau. So that's going to happen too. That hasn't happened yet. All right. The destruction of Esau, that nation, that wicked nation upon this earth. <clears throat> so it says, verse 14, for many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them of them also. And, and that has happened. All right. The, Part the, Carth the Parthians, which are the Iranians, the Persians, the Medes, and ultimately uh, Esau with Alexander the Crete, you know, and the pagans, and the Africans and the Arabs with the slave trade. And the Elamites with the, the dot head Indians, all right, they all had their part, according to the book of Psalms, where it says that they all had their part in our downfall. So, for many nations and king, great kings shall serve themselves of them also. Look at Trump, they, they eating off the taxation, off the contracts, off the yoke that's placed upon the children of Israel today as, as bond slaves. They eating off the taxation. They eating off the work, sweat equity. You know. You know. So uh, making the rich richer and the poor poor. Um, it says, and I will recompense them according to their deeds. Man. So the Lord said, today Esau represents Babylon, that final nation that has us in their grip. But the Lord said, what? Double unto them as they have done unto us, man, because the Lord hate them. He set them up and wrote their story and had them acted out to be the wicked upon the earth in these last days. As he created the wicked for the day of evil. As an adversary, a challenger. Whew. Deep. I hate to be in that seat. For real, Esau. So-called white man. It says, for many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. All right. All the gadgets and devices, imaginations that are being manifested against Israel by Esau, his blessing, the sword, destruction, and the guns and missiles and shit. All that's going to come being turned back on them. All right. The Lord going to show up and, de and destroy the devices of these nations that have been created. All right. Uh, and according to the works of their own hands. For thus saith Yahweh, power of Israel unto, unto, uh, unto Israel, unto me, take the wine cup of this fury at my hand. 
It says, and cause all the nations to drink, uh, to whom I send thee to drink it. So today, in these times, the Lord said, what? The children of Israel drunk of that cup, and we weren't supposed to drink of that cup, but now that cup is going to pass through you, you heathen nations. And Esau has done the most wickedness to us, so they're going to drink double. All right, verse 16. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. All right, so with that, I'm going to end it there, man. And uh, we'll say, Kao Halayim Lehawa by Hashem Yahushai. By Hashem Harakaku Daesh Ma'ama. Double on to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. And shalom to you, Akim, and Nagwatim, and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. All right, this is Mark 13 and 13. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved.